Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94 here, back with another. <sighs> we gotta do this video, man. I know, I know, and uh, I know y'all tired of me complaining about my Bucks, but man, we lost to the Utah Jazz. We got blown out by the Utah Jazz at home. Fans were booing the Bucks in a home game. We were at home versus the Jazz. And right now, I'm, I'm keeping the eye on the Bucks and Celtics. Right now, we blowing the Celtics out by 30. We 30 balling the Celtics right now. Hmm, I wonder how we going to blow this lead. Yeah, that's right. I lost all faith in the Bucks. I've lost all faith in my Bucks. Until we make some trades, we're not winning a championship this year. It's not happening, bro. With the team we got orchestrated, we got a brand new coach. I don't know why we did not pick up fucking Nick Nurse when the opportunity presented itself. We had an opportunity to get Nick Nurse. If not, go get Doc Rivers. We could have had Doc Rivers. I wouldn't have mind getting Doc Rivers. I know Doc Rivers just doesn't have the best resume, but I would have took him over Adrian Griffin. I would have took anybody over Adrian Griffin. Frank Vogel's out there. Uh, Mark Jackson is still out there. If he wants to come back and coach, I don't know. Um... I don't know, man. I don't know why we took a, a brand. We took a brand. We took a wet behind the ears rookie coach trying to win a championship with the coach that does not know how to run fucking schemes or try to change up the defense and try to find the right lineups to contain certain certain teams. We don't have and the sad part is I don't know what's going on with our GM. Normally our GM does a good job. Our GM is terrible, bro. I I'm, I don't know, man. I think our GM smoking on dope, man. He probably I know I know up there in Milwaukee, y'all 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 brought crack back. Y'all sniffing that powder up there in Milwaukee, which is why I left. I left at the right fucking time. But <sighs> I hope the GM ain't on that powder, man. I hope he's not. Hope he ain't smoking that weed, popping them pills, sniffing that powder. Cause look, man, I'm say like this right now, bro. Yes, you pulled off the Damian Lillard trade, but why did you not take uh, another asset so that way we can have some fucking defense? Why are y'all banking on Jay Crowder? Jay Crowder is damn near 40 years old. What the fuck is Jay Crowder going to do? Jay Crowder is past his prom. The nigga, the nigga ain't played since the second week of the NBA. The second and third week of the NBA season. This nigga's been injured ever since. Fuck out of here, bro. Stupid ass nigga, bro. We didn't take none of the young assets that the Portland Trailblazers had. I'm pretty sure they would have gave them to us too. Considering the fact that they was trying to get rid of Dame. Dame. They was ready to move on. They said, we got Scoot. We good. You can take Dame. You want another young asset? You can take him as well. You want some defense? Here, here you go. You could have met you could have got another team involved just to get some extra additional pieces on defense. I I I think our GM's smoking dope, man. The the Bucks GM is smoking dope. But anyways, though, without further ado, let's get right into this, bro. Even though we 30 balling the Celtics right now, which is a good thing, but I don't trust it, man. By the fourth quarter, we blown that lead. Uh and we probably lost by like 10. I guarantee it, bro. Right here, we have a chart that shows how many points the highest scoring perimeter player had while playing the Milwaukee Bucks this season. Let's go through this. It started on opening night when Tyrese Maxey gave the Bucks 31 points while barely losing. Trey Young gave us 20 points and gave the Bucks their first L of the season. Then we went to Miami where Tyler Hero gave us all we could handle in a close win. Then Jalen Brunson went and did Jalen Brunson things like torch the Bucks shitty perimeter defense. Yep. And then Cam Thomas wanted in on that 45 point action as well. Yep. Kate Cunningham gave us 33 while the Bucks barely snuck a win out. 120 oh, so to upset. Halliburton, sorry, I meant to say the Bucks own. Owner, dropped a casual 20. Hey, 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 chill, bro. Chill, bro. Chill, bro. Don't even don't even do that, bro. Chill, bro. Don't even sit up here and say Halliburton is the Bucks owner. Don't even do that, bro. I'll beat your ass, bro. 
Don't ever play in my city like that, bro. We'll beat your ass, bro. Fuck you think you talking to, bro. You got me fucked up. No, I'm really heated, bro. Don't ever say that again in your life. Halliburton's the owner. The Bucks owner, Halliburton. Man, I'll beat your ass, bro, if you say that shit, bro. Say that shit again. I'll beat your ass, nigga. Scotty Barnes gave us 29. Yo, that's fucked up, Lamella nigga. Ball gave us his season high of 37. Man, Luka Lamella Ball still played? I thought he was in. 74 injured. points against us. Poole actually decides to have somewhat high efficiency only against the Bucks, and Mr. No Left Hand gave us 26 points. We caught a break here. Trey Young gave us 32. Brunson actually had an off day against the Bucks. Halliburton just logged another day in the office. A wash DeMar DeRozan gave us 41 points. That shit another was ridiculous. Another lucky stretch here. Kelvin Johnson gave us 28. Franz Wagner gave us 29. Brunson dropped 36 and 38 points on John Cena, the way you can't see the Milwaukee Bucks defense. Didn't know you need the whole Milwaukee Bucks team to fly out to Cleveland to do cone drills, Donovan Mitchell. Flashback to when the Nets rested their top eight players and Dennis Smith Jr. was their leading scorer. Don't even need to say anything here. And here. Once again, we're letting the Spurs perimeter players violate us. And the Bucks still lost this game. The Bucks perimeter defense sucks. It's no secret that the Bucks defense has taken a huge step down after losing probably the best perimeter defender in the league in Drew Holiday. Oh, we the miss Bucks you, Drew. Rating went from fourth we place miss you, last Drew. Year at <laughs> oh, we miss you, buddy. To 19th place oh, at we miss you, buddy. You know your perimeter defense is actually terrible. Uh, shout out to Drew Holiday, man. We miss you, buddy. From last year, a former defensive. It's good to see that you're struggling in Boston, though. That's good. That's good. Struggling in Boston. Third of the league in defense. <laughs> the only reason why the Bucks are still a top three team in the East. Hey, right struggling in Boston, my nigga. Is being Giannis. If the Bucks want to have any chance of contending, I would. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if we sit uh, Drew. If we sit Drew to Portland. Just so you could go to Boston, so that way we could make sh so that way we could guarantee. I think, I think, I think, I think, uh, Drew's still working for us, bro. We just don't know it. We got an inside, <laughs> we got an inside job going on with this with the Celtics right now. We can't get past them, so we got to infiltrate their system. <laughs> oh, the evil workings, the evil workings. Uh, I love it. I love it. I don't know why my face keeps getting fucking. I need to move this light back some. I don't know. It wasn't like this yesterday. Is it cool now? It's cool now. Yeah, the light too close. That's probably why. The light too fucking close. The 2024 NBA championship. They're going to need to make some sort of move before this trade deadline. So we're going to go over potential trades the Bucks can make to save the Giannis and Dame duo. Huh. Tier 3. You know of what, all tiers? the possible players the Bucks could acquire before this year's trade deadline, I've grouped them into three tiers. Tier one is the best possible scenario for the Bucks. The okay. fit is good. The players are cheap enough to acquire, and they fit the role which the Bucks need, which are locked on perimeter defenders that can also space the floor for Giannis. Tier two are players that are still an upgrade for the Bucks roster, but it's more likely just going to be the remainder of the season for the player, and it's not that big of a risk for the Bucks to get into. Think of PJ. Talker in 2021 for the Bucks. He did his role in winning the championship and then just dipped. And then no, tier three are like the same. That's not true. He wanted to stay, but Bucks management fucked that up somehow. That's why I said, bro, whoever the GM of the Bucks is, bro, I forgot his name. You, I don't know what your problem is, bro. I don't know why you keep trying to progressively make this team worse and worse every year since we won the championship. I don't know what your idea of us being a championship caliber team is, but whatever it is, you've been fucking up terribly, bro. You have been fucking up this team terribly, bro. And I fucking hate what you've done. You gave up all our young assets for Jay Crowder. Fuck you.
safety options for the Bucks. If they can't get a tier 1 or tier 2 guy, these players will most likely be available but aren't certainly guaranteed upgrades. So to start us off here in tier 3, ironically we have PJ Tucker for 11 million dollars, uh, Otto much. Porter Jr. from the Warriors for That's not bad. Otto Porter Jr. is not bad. Daniel That's a good pickup. Jr. I'm not familiar with uh, Daniel House. And Isaac Okoro from the Cavs for 8.9 million dollars. Uh, PJ Tucker Oh no, that 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 wasn't a bad. Look, opinion, I'll, I'll wait to the, the end, bro. I'll wait to the end. He's 38 years old right now and has only played 15 games this season, averaging 1.3 points a game. And? Obviously, if the Bucks signed him, it would only be to try to get another ring, and he'd be out by the summer. Definitely a if all else fails option. The second worst option here is probably Daniel House Jr., who's another three and D wing that plays for the 76ers right now. Yeah, he's I'm not familiar with his game. In the current day, he's only played 22 games this year and is averaging 3.4 points on 34.4 percent efficiency mm. from three the next best option on here is Otto porter jr that's a really good pick a really up. big part in the warriors championship in 2022 during that run, he averaged a steal a game and shot 40 percent from three and 49 percent from the field while only playing around and that's crazy how he just got his ring from the warriors this year that's crazy bro but yeah most definitely man um Auto Porter Jr. would be a great pickup because that's that's three point shooting and that's good defense and he's tall, he's got length. Um definitely somebody we should pick up. Twenty minutes. The playoff experience. I wouldn't trust him in the clutch though. He makes he terrible decisions in the clutch. Numbers on a run if you really needed them. The last guy we have on here is Isaac Okoro from the Cavs. Mm, the that's a good pickup. Hey, Bucks GM. This is a good pickup. He's pretty cheap. Look at that price. He's pretty fucking cheap. Pretty fucking cheap, my guy. That's a pretty good pickup right there. Plus, he's very fucking young. He's very young. He's tall. He's got size. So that way he can be a fucking utility player. He can play the two, the three, the four if we need him to. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this is a good pickup right here, yo. Let's get it done. He's proven that he can be a lockdown defender on the perimeter and has shown steady improvement from the last three or four years in his career. That's He's pretty solid the only stats. guy in tier three that could actually stay longer than the rest of this year from the potential he has of being hmm. young. Okay, let's check out tier two before we now in get tier into two it. we also have four players that being jonathan kaminga from the warriors for 6.0 million dollars we're not any idea nah, from the warriors we're not 6.2 million dollars gary payton the second nah. also from the warriors for 8.7 million dollars nigga if we was to make a trade for jonathan kaminga a gary payton jr we would have to possibly give up brooke lopez Cause that's what they gonna want. They gonna want size. They're not. They're possibly not gonna give up Kevon Looney. We could ask for Kevon Looney if we are gonna give up Brook Lopez, but they are gonna be like, nah. Kaminga's pretty good, and and <laughs> they went through hell and back just to get Gary Payton Jr. back. You think they gonna let? They, you think they just gonna let J G Gary Payton Jr. walk and not get something of value in return? No, Brook Lopez is the guy they want. If we do business with the Warriors, they're gonna want Brooke Lopez. And we cannot give up Brooke Lopez. It's not it's not happening. Brooke Lopez is 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 a buck. Okay? He's a buck for life. We ain't letting him go. The Lakers fucked the last team he was on the Lakers. They fucked up. They let us pick him up. We ain't we ain't let him go since. Splash Mountain stays in Milwaukee, okay? We not letting Splash Mountain go to the Golden State. We not doing that, bro. That's too much. That's that's dangerous, bro. That's dangerous. If you put Brook Lopez on the fucking Warriors, that is dangerous. You just gave them. You just gave these niggas a championship again. That is dangerous territory. Oh no, we cannot do that. That is dangerous territory we playing with. So there's no fucking way. Now a trade for Chris Middleton, I don't have a problem with. But they would have to give up either Draymond or Clay if they want Chris. <laughs> That's if they want Chris. I I highly doubt they will want Chris Middleton. But 
if there was a scenario where they were willing to just get rid of Kaminga because of the locker room problems that's going on between him and Steve Kerr right now, the best case scenario, we could give up uh, Chris Middleton. He's coming back in the form, yes, but the nigga's still only playing like 15 to 20 minutes a game. It's been two years since the ACL, bro. Like, it's it, it's been two years, bro. You telling me you haven't rehabbed and, and gotten back into shape yet? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like nah, we can we can definitely we can definitely do without Chris Middleton. We can let him go to the Warriors and let them deal with him and his uh his uh rehab rehabbing of his ACL. We would definitely take Jonathan Kaminga and we'll probably have to take Dre or Clay because it's clear that they one of it's clear that they only are willing to pay one of them. And they are going to let the other one go. More than likely they're probably gonna let Clay go. Because they they dick ride they dick ride Draymond way too much over there. I don't see them getting rid of Draymond. But if they do get rid of Draymond, I possibly wouldn't have a problem with us getting rid of Brooke Lopez. Because if we get Draymond for if we get Draymond, defense is top tier. Our defensive problems are fixed. Draymond's IQ, his prowess, how he attacks on defense, and just being a guy that can he can guard all five positions. That's the crazy part. People don't understand. People don't realize. I, I understand the antics that come with Draymond, but dog, that's a championship. We good. That's a championship team. You got Dame. You got Giannis. Draymond's not really a scorer. He doesn't look to score. He looks to find the right play, the right player, and the right play. We got shooters all around the board, so there's not going to be a problem there. You know what I'm saying? You got Dame that's running points, so that's just like playing with Steph, kind of. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't disrespect Steph like that. I wouldn't disrespect Steph like that. Let's be real. Steph is a, that's that, that's, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a top 10 player all the time let's let's keep it real um but if there was something as close to Steph it would be Dane so it wouldn't really feel out of place for Draymond to really be here in Milwaukee he would still be in the same situation it's just that he would have a guy who plays his position he would basically he would basically have a guy who plays his position and I'm pretty sure he would be fine with that because I wouldn't mind moving Draymond to the three. Because think about it, Draymond would be guarding KD, LeBron, uh, shit. He could take on Halliburton if need be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shit. Like yo, Draymond is a Draymond be a really good pickup F defensively. Yo, we're winning a championship if we pick up Draymond. If we pick up Clay. It's it's solid because we got a good shooter now. We got a really, really, really dangerous good shooter to pair up with Dame. But because Clay's just not Clay's clearly not the same Clay from 2000 and 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15. He's clearly not that Clay no more. But he's still pretty solid to to get to get. Gary Payton Jr. would be a big plus. Gary Payton would be a big plus. Uh, Kaminga would definitely be a big plus. But like I said, bro, that's that's you're making a deal with the devil here because you you would have to give. They're gonna want Brooke Lopez. They're gonna want the size. Brooke Lopez is the best option if you want something from the Warriors. The Warriors need size, and they are willing to give. Uh, they would be willing to give up these two assets. In exchange for Brooke Lopez. And I just don't want to give up Brooke Lopez. No, we cannot do that. Because then we basically just gave the Warriors a chance to win the fucking championship. Because now they got somebody that can guard fucking Jokic come playoff time. <laughs> so, nah, you really don't want to go through that. Then you got somebody that can guard AD. If they ever face the LeBron, if they ever face the Lakers again. 
I said the LeBron. I said the, I said the LeBron Lake. I was finna say the LeBron Lakers. What the fuck? And Royce O'Neal from the Nets for $9.5 million. I think Jonathan Kaminga is definitely the most interesting one on here. Recently, he has reportedly given up on Coach Steve Kerr in Golden State after they choked an 18-point lead against the Nuggets. I think it's pretty clear that Kaminga wants out of Golden State with his frustration of playing time. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're going to want to get rid of him, but... I know the asking price is going to be high because it's the Golden State Warriors. Just because it's Golden State alone, I know the asking price is going to be fucking high. So it's not even worth making a deal with the devil, bro. Because if we're going to make a deal with the devil, at least give us Clay or Draymond. Give us one of them, bro. If we're going to give you Brooke Lopez, at least give us Clay or Draymond. And I think the Bucks would be a decent landing spot for him. Kaminga is definitely a really talented player, but I could see him having. We'll give you draft picks. We'll give you draft capital, guards, which is kind of what the Bucks need. And he can't really shoot well from the outside, being limited as a floor spacer. But the talent and potential is certainly there. The next slept-on player we have I want to talk about is Denny Avdia. Avdia has been a super key player for the Wizards coming off the bench. He's averaging a hair under 12 points a game, shooting about. 35% from three and 50% from the field while averaging a steal a game. He's having a breakout year so far. On defense, he's a very active player in the gaps and he's still somewhat raw on offense, but he's only 22 years old. Definitely the most underrated player the Bucks could target. The second option for the Bucks would be Gary Payton II. That would Just be, like that's, this Porter would be a Jr. really good GP2 pickup. Played a very but I know they're going to want for Brooke Lopez for him. In 2022. Gary Payton is similar to Kaminga, a player that could also be looking to get out of goal. They don't want Brooke to get Lopez on a contending team. GP2 could be the pesk on defense that the Bucks need. Just Facts. the sheer defensive intensity, passion, and hustle we he brings need is exactly what this Bucks half-hearted defense needs. And the final player, who I think is the Bucks' best option in Tier 2, is Royce O'Neal from the Nets. When looking at the Nets roster, it's literally filled to the brim with shooting guards and wings. All yeah, because look, I... I I'm going to be honest with you. We should really be talking to the Brooklyn Nets right now. That's really who we should be talking to. Uh, we should definitely be asking about Lonnie Walker. We should definitely be asking about Dory, uh, uh, Dory Fence, uh, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith. And definitely Royce O'Neal. These these are probably our three best the three best assets you could ask for. I'm pretty sure they're willing to give up Lonnie Walker for... Probably Pat Connington. They'll probably they'll, they'll more than likely give us him for Pat Connington. Um, but if we want a package deal where we take Lonnie Walker and Royce O'Neal, I'm pretty sure we would have to give up somebody like probably Bobby, which I really hate to let him go because he's a fan favorite. And you already know, you know, you know, man. Hey, man, we all love Bobby, man. We love Bobby, man. The energy he brings, you know, the the the, the passion that he has for this for the shit. We love Bobby, man. But if we gotta move him, we gotta move him, bro. If we gonna move him, let's at least move him for some good picks. Cause realistically, I say let's get two guys instead of one guy. I don't think just getting one guy is just gonna clear up everything. No, let's go get two. Let's get Royce O'Neal. Let's get Lonnie Walker. Let's give up Pat Connington. Uh, let's give up Pat Connington and Bobby. And probably a draft pick, too. We're probably about to give up a draft pick, too. And uh, uh, the Brooklyn Nets can work with that. I'm pretty sure Bobby would fit right in. Pat would also fit right. Pat would definitely fit in with this team. Pat would definitely fit in with this team. Um... I think that I think that these two right here would be the best pickups if we talking like for I think if if, if we talking like just perimeter defense switching pick and roll situations um going up against guys like uh I want to say Halliburton um uh, who's been giving us problems all fucking season uh that would definitely help with these two right here, um, they'll, those two would definitely help. But Dor Dorian Finney-Smith is definitely the the one you want. But I know there's going to be a high asking. There's going to be a high asking price for. There's going to be a high price for him.
asking for him, I should say. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to articulate what I'm trying to say. But y'all get what I'm trying to say. All the 3D players they have that are in the rotation right now are <clears throat> Mikel Bridges, Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, Cam Johnson, Royce O'Neal, and Lonnie Walker the fourth, who are all in the rotation. Of these seven players I mentioned, there's no shot they get Bridges, and I highly doubt they get Johnson or Dinwiddie, let alone the money would be too much. I yeah. think the Nets, out of all these guys, would be willing to give up Royce O'Neal, and I think the Bucks would get enough value to trade for him in the first place. Royce O'Neal would definitely be a great option for the Bucks with his defensive versatility and his ability to get red hot from three. Yeah, that's why I say he, he would definitely be a good pick. Now, let's talk about the A1 guys the Bucks should try to prioritize in this trade deadline this year. Once again, we have four players. Matisse Thibel from the Blazers for $10.5 million. Dorian Finney-Smith from see, the... See, this is my problem right here. Why didn't we package him with Dame when we fucking first got him, dog? Why didn't we package to get him as well? It would have been a nice little package we could have picked up right here. We could have easily picked him up in the package. We could have said, yo, we want, yo, because I'm pretty sure they would have easily gave him to us. They would have easily gave uh, Matt T, uh, uh, Matisse Thibault to us, bro, with Dame in the package, bro. Think about it. We giving up fucking Drew. We giving them Drew Holiday. They're going to get a lot of trade assets back for Drew Holiday. So they're going to get a lot of uh, 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 capital back for Drew Holiday. They just got Adri uh, uh, DeAndre Aiden from the fucking Sun. So they good. They good. We could have took Matisse Thibel in there, in there because they know they would have got a good package back for Drew Holiday. But we decided like fucking idiots just to just take a fucking Dane. No, get a package. This is what I mean by the GM of the Bucks is fucking retarded. He own that. Sh He's smoking that dope, man. He's smoking that dope. I'm telling you, the GM of the Bucks is smoking dope, man. Because he keep making bad trades. You traded all our young assets away for Jay Crowder. And you didn't get any uh players of substance back along with that trade don't just go after jay crowder get some other players too if we had some better if we had some more defenders coming off the bench with jay crowder i'm pretty sure we could have we could have handled jimmy butler and uh miami heat without um without Giannis in that first round And we would probably be in a better position right now if we took Dame and Matisse Thibel, packaged them together in that trade. Portland knows they're going to get a lot back for Drew Holiday. So why the fuck are we sitting up here? Man, these niggas don't know how to negotiate. These niggas don't know how to think ahead. You have to think ahead. You have to be a three-dimensional thinker. Ladies and gentlemen, always remember this in life. There's, there's, there's two type of thinkers. There's two-dimensional thinkers, and there's three-dimensional thinkers. Three-dimensional thinkers, they see everything around them. They see they see everything around them. They can see ahead. They can see behind. They can see diagonal. They can see up, down. You know what I'm saying? You can see from all angles. Two-dimensional thinkers can only see what's in front of them, what's on the side of them. They never look up. They never look down. They always, they only look... They only look in three to make three directions: forward, left, right. And our Bucks GM is a two-dimensional thinker because clearly he don't know how to do this shit. Clearly, he doesn't know how to do this shit. The Nets for 13.9 million, Alex Caruso from the Bulls for 9.4 million, and Marcus Smart from the Grizzlies for 18.8 million dollars. Matisse Thibel for the Blazers has really improved as a 3 and D player over the last year. This season, he's shooting 38% from three on four attempts a game and is averaging 1.6 steals a game. Thibel's defense on the perimeter and his versatility on that end is definitely something the Bucks need. Now, remember all. And we should have picked him up when we picked up Dame Lillard. We should have packaged him.
the seven wouldn't be in the situation we are right well, now. Besides Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney-Smith seems like the next highest guy that the Nets would willingly trade away. While it would still bring lots of value to the Bucks, Dorian Finney-Smith has proven to be one of the best 3 and D players in the league. Facts. This year he's shooting 41% from 3 on 5.6 shot attempts, which is very impressive efficiency. Dorian is also one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. I think putting him around Giannis and Dame, while that duo sucks up all of the attention on offense, is really where he thrives best just like when he was with Luka in Dallas all he has to do is just hit open threes and play good defense Facts. the second best option the Bucks should target this trade deadline is Al all right now look I understand Caruso but y'all have to understand everybody in the league right now wants Caruso that's why I'm not even looking at Caruso that's why I never talked about him this entire time we already lost out on the OG and Adobe um uh, sweepstakes that's done and over with so now every i know every bucks fan is saying alex caruso alex caruso alex caruso here's the problem everybody wants alex caruso bucks fans listen bro everybody wants this man so this is not the best fucking option right now let's see if we can get a package deal, like I said, I'm pretty sure the Bulls will be willing to give him to us. But here's the thing, because the, everybody's asking about him, the price keeps going up. So are we willing to give up some valuable pieces on our team as is right now just for this one guy? And it's not a good move. It's just like the Jay Crowder situation all over again. We don't know if this guy is really going to fit in with the team like that. We're just saying that because he plays good defense. We don't know if this guy really fits in with us like that. We don't know if he's really a good rotational piece. We don't know if this is really going to work out for him. Like I said, he, he he's too high value right now. Let's look at some of the other guys that we're not looking at. Now... Let's 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 I I let him finish up and then we'll we'll go back to the tier list and then we'll look at him. One of the best three and D players in the league. He's shooting fifty percent from the field and forty two percent from three. Yeah, they're gonna be asking. They're gonna be asking for too much. Very efficient numbers. They're gonna be asking for too much. Three steals a game. Getting Caruso would be an absolute steal for the Bucks, especially because he's paid less than ten million a year. Caruso's defensive intensity, his IQ of the game, and his overall scrappiness would definitely help the Bucks. But if the Bucks could get one player this mm. trade deadline, the one ideal fit player that could take their defense up a completely Hey, look. I would love to shit in Celtics fans' faces. Just like they tried just like they did us. This would be our get back. Just like when they picked up Drew, this would be our get back. This would be our ultimate get back. And I love being petty. You know me. In 2024, we all we toxic all the way through. All year we toxic. But this is not a good move. Let me explain why this is not a good move. It's a great move. We can definitely win a championship. But this is not something we should even be looking at. This is not something we should even be entertaining. One... He costs too much. Two, we going more than likely we gonna have to give up Bobby. If we give up Bobby, we're gonna have to take somebody else from their team. We can't just give up Bobby and a bunch of other guys just to um just to just to get this guy. We can't just take him. We have to get a package deal. We have to make sure we get him and another person to go along with it. So that way we can fix. One guy is not going to fix our defensive problems. We at least need two guys. Two guys. Like if we're going to give up three pieces. If we're going to give up two or three pieces. Let's get two pieces back. Marcus Smart is a great addition. But you have to package him with somebody else. Who else on the Memphis Grizzlies could we really look at and say, oh, he's definitely going to be great defensively for us. 
Come on, Chief. The only person is Jared is Jared Jackson Jr. And you know Memphis is not giving up Jared Jackson Jr. So don't even so so don't even play around with that. Unless uh, no, I think Stephen Adams is out for the season. Yeah, Stephen Adams is out for the season. So I would say let's trade for Stephen Adams. That would be a really good pickup to have as a good backup because that dude gets boards and he's unselfish. He's a great playmaker. Um, not really that great on the offensive end, but dog, can he get some offensive buckets? We can get a lot of second chance points, which would be really good if we played somebody like, um, uh, let's say Joel Embiid, because Joel Embiid does not do good against, um, he, he doesn't have his best games against, uh, Steven Adams, but Steven Adams is out for the whole season. So it's not even worth going for different level marcus smart would be that guy and i'm aware that it would cost a lot of money and assets to get smart from the facts on the sports illustrated website they created an article that gives an idea for a trade package to get marcus smart in this hypothetical the bucks get marcus smart no well. this is a terrible fucking trade this is a terrible fucking trade think about it, we're giving a boo champ no you don't give a boo champ for this motherfucker right here if you give in a boo champ you get you get Give us bang. <laughs> Shit. You, we is not finna give up our young talent. Once again, we are not finna sit up here and give away our young talent for just one guy. You see how it burnt us last year. We got knocked out in the first round by a fucking playing team. So why the fuck would we repeat the same fucking process again? It don't make no sense. If y'all hear something in the background, it's raining. No, this is a terrible trade. Anyways, so let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the, uh, let's go back here. Let's go back here. All right, boom. I'm looking realistically, and like I said, the best case scenarios. Like I said, I know everybody wants Alex Caruso, but here's the thing. Every other team in the league wants Alex Caruso. The Lakers want Caruso. The Clippers want Caruso. Uh, OKC probably is looking into it. There's a lot of better GMs out there that can make moves. There are a lot of teams with good assets that can make moves. Okay? You don't think Cleveland might try to make a move for them? You don't think fucking New York? You think New York is done making moves? You think the Lakers won't take him back in a heartbeat? Come on, man. Y'all should know better, man. It's a, it's a whole bunch of teams with good assets that are willing to give up anybody and everybody just for this one guy. I understand Caruso, but Caruso is... Caruso, we should throw our hat in there See what the Bulls want for him. If it's good, if it's if it's decent enough, let's go ahead and get uh let's go ahead and get Caruso. Let's take Derrick Jones Jr. possibly. Or let's see if we could try to get Kobe White. I would love for us to have Kobe White and Caruso because now we solid. We have to get more than just one guy. One guy is not gonna fix our defensive problem. We need two guys. We need two guys, okay? Bucks fans, we need two guys. So let's try to get a package deal here. Let's not just go out and just get one fucking guy. Let's get two guys. The the Brooklyn Nets got the Brooklyn Nets got guys for days that they're willing to give up. The Brooklyn Nets ain't doing nothing. I'm pretty sure they're willing to go to the lottery. With all the draft capital they got back from um fucking uh Kyrie and uh KD, oh I know they're willing to go into the draft right now with the bad team, and then they got Mikael Bridges locked up, they got uh Cam Johnson locked up, Ben Simmons got one year left on his deal, so good riddance to that motherfucker. Then he could finally go to LA with LeBron and still be a and still be a piece of trash. Still be a piece of shit trash player when he goes to L.A. with LeBron because that's what he wants. He want to be playing with LeBron.
punk ass, little light skin ass. Um, the Brooklyn Nets have the best to offer because we can get multiple players, and they're really cheap. I know Caruso's cheap, but everybody wants Caruso. Everybody can afford Caruso. Okay, every team can afford Caruso. He's under, he's under, he's under the value. He's under value. So every team in the league could possibly afford him. Let's make moves. But if there was a good move, I would say Otto Porter Jr. is a really good move. Just off length. Defense and shooting alone. I would try to package him with a coral. I would try to package a deal. I would try to make a three team deal to get these two. That's just me. I would make a deal to get these two. Otto Porter Jr. is a really good pickup. A coral, he's young. He's tall. He can guard all. He can guard. Um, he can guard the one through the. Uh, he can guard the one through the four. Otto Porter Jr. can do the same thing. Guard the one through the four. He can switch out. He's big. He can rebound too. They're pretty solid. Okoro's athletic too. So we will have some energy. Like I said, if there was a trade that could be made. We could give up Bobby. We can give up Pat. We might have to sadly give up Boo Champ, which I really don't want to do, but we possibly may have to do it. Um, and move those three players around. Let the other two teams figure out who they want. And then we take Otto Porter Jr. and we take a Coral from the Cavs. And then, voila, we good. We got two solid players. But if not, let's make a trade. But if we want to do it just straight down the line, we don't want to get another team involved. We don't want to go through that hassle. Let's make a deal with the Brooklyn Nets. They don't really have a lot of – they got a lot of draft capital from the Kyrie and KD trades from last year. They got a lot of draft capital. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll be willing to tank. They're really the team is really not doing nothing. The team is in the middle of the pack. Team ain't really doing nothing. Um, I'm pretty sure giving up Bobby Pat, um, Bobby Pat, and uh, possibly, uh, shit. Who else, who else could we fucking give up? I really don't want to give up Boochamp. Especially not to a team like the fucking Brooklyn Nets of all teams. Because I know he going to flourish there. I know he going to turn into a superstar there. I know Boo Champ will turn into a fucking superstar if he goes to the fucking, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Brooklyn Nets. He would definitely thrive there. Um, Maybe we give up some draft capital. Give them some more draft capital. Because I'm pretty sure the Brooklyn Nets are willing to tank the season. So giving them just more draft capital would help them. I think they'll take all the draft capital they can get. Because they would be a young team with a star with a with a with an all-star caliber player on their squad right now. Then they would still have a solid team. Um, they can still build through the draft. They could possibly get better picks than what we could get. But, yeah, I would say the Brooklyn Nets is the safest bet. But if the most opportunistic bet that won't hurt the salary cap and really is a good look would be the um, Auto Porter and a Curl, get both of them, that would be dope. I understand some people will probably say, what about dude right here? Listen, I understand but like I said, once again, are we willing to give up a bunch of assets for one guy? Now, maybe the Wizards don't value this guy. Maybe the Wizards are trying to just get rid of him. Because they stuck with Jordan Poole. <laughs> Believe it or not, they're stuck with Jordan Poole. They're, I'm pretty sure they're looking like, yo, we got to stick with Jordan Poole for about one or two more years. And then we can start shopping, shopping Jordan Poole around. Um... I'm pretty sure they'll be willing to give him up for possibly nothing but some draft picks, which would be dope. But once again, it's just one guy. We need more than one guy. So hopefully we can make some deals. The bad, the bet, the worst deal on here 
the worst deal on here is doing business with the Warriors. That's one thing we cannot do because if we give them Brook Lopez, the Western Conference just got shooken up. Uh, the Warriors are back in the playoff hunt. <laughs> And we just unleashed another fucking animal. We just gave the Warriors another fucking title. We possibly may have just given the Warriors another fucking title, which we cannot do. So, yeah. Brooklyn Nets are a safe bet. Alex Caruso is cool, but we need to get somebody else along with him. Matisse Thibel is a good pickup, but we should have got him when we got Dane. Marcus Smart would be the most pettiest move we ever make. But I wouldn't give up so much for him. Because if we give up so much for him, our, what, does that, what does our team look like then? Clearly it's not going to be as good as it is right now. Let me check the score right now. Let me see if the Bucks blew to 30. I'm not, God damn! We 40 balling these niggas. God damn, the Celtics ass. Um... We 40 balling these niggas now. But yeah, man, I, that's all I really wanted to say, man. As a Bucks fan, to all the other Bucks fans out there, man, uh, our best move is making moves, is making is uh doing business with the Brooklyn Nets. They got the best uh trade trade assets. Um everybody's gonna want Caruso. He's affordable. Almost every team in the league can basically afford him. So let's just throw our hat in there, see what they want for him. The price is gonna be fucking high. We move on. We don't need we don't need to be giving up good assets just for one guy. It's not worth it. Um and this would be this would be the option that I would go with. This, me personally, this would be the option I would go with right here. I would try to go see if I can get these two right here. Definitely don't do business with the Warriors. But anyway, so that's just going to do it for this one. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. I'll get back to you till then. Peace out. Goddamn, the Bucks. Shout out to the Bucks, man. Y'all holding it down, bro.